Welcome to this series about how to become a DeFi developer. In the previous video of this series, I explained how I got started in DeFi and what kind of benefits you get as a DeFi developer. In this video, you will take your first step in your journey for becoming a DeFi developer. I will introduce the main categories of DeFi project and also the most popular DeFi project. Let's get started. There are many blockchain, but Ethereum has by far the most active ecosystem. Most of the decentralized applications most developers and most users are on Ethereum. When DeFi took off, the early DeFi project were all launched on Ethereum. Recently, we started to see some DeFi projects launching on other blockchains like Binance Smart Chain. These blockchains are trying to capitalize on the high gas fees of Ethereum to steal some market share. But the DeFi ecosystem on other blockchains is still tiny compared to Ethereum. And most of the DeFi projects are just copy paste of Ethereum DeFi project with no innovation. So I don't recommend to spend too much time studying DeFi projects outside of Ethereum. Just focus on the DeFi apps on Ethereum and already it will be more than enough to keep you busy. There are hundreds of DeFi projects on Ethereum. On this website, DeFi Pearls, you will find a list of the most popular DeFi projects on Ethereum. First, we have stablecoins. Stablecoins are tokens that always keep the same price. It might not sound like a big deal, but before stablecoins on the blockchain, most assets used to trade against Ethereum, which is very volatile and that really wasn't ideal. So stablecoins brought a huge improvement in terms of usability in the DeFi space. There are different systems for stablecoins, but in general, stablecoins are trusted because they are backed by other assets. One of the most popular stablecoins is called DAI from a project called MakerDAO. This is the most decentralized stablecoin and most hardcore DeFi users prefer to use DAI. What is surprising with DAI is that although its features are quite simple, just keeping a stable price, technically it's quite a complex project. But as a DeFi developer, we generally don't need to get into that. We mostly care about using the stable coins in our project. That's it. Another big category of DeFi is decentralized exchanges or DEX. It's the main use case of DeFi. With DEX, you can trade coins on the blockchain in a decentralized way. All trades go through a smart contract. There is no middleman. There is no KYC procedure. You can start to trade right away. And anybody can list a token, contrary to centralized exchanges where only tokens with lots of liquidity can be listed. These are the two main reasons why decentralized exchanges became so popular. The biggest decentralized exchange on Ethereum is called Uniswap. In 2020, Uniswap became so popular that its trading volume surpassed Coinbase. If you never heard of Coinbase, that's one of the biggest centralized exchanges with much more resources than the team of Uniswap. So for Uniswap to overtake Coinbase was something really extraordinary. It wasn't the first decentralized exchange in DeFi, but there were three features that made it really stand out. Anybody could list new markets without any permission. There was no token required to pay the trading fees and the interface was very simple. You can just buy and sell tokens, no graphs, no bells and whistles, but just the basics. The next big category in DeFi is lending protocols. With lending protocols, you can borrow and lend tokens on the blockchain in a decentralized way. If you have some tokens and you want to earn some interest, it's a great way to earn some interest on your crypto instead of just letting it slip. And if you want to borrow tokens, you need to first provide some other tokens as collateral. This collateral is used to secure your loan. At any time, if the value of the collateral falls below a certain threshold, your loan will be liquidated and your collateral will be used to reimburse the loan. One advantage is that there are no credit checks. It doesn't matter who you are. But on the other hand, you need to already have some assets in order to borrow. The most popular lending protocol is Compound. Compound has almost $4 billion in their protocol spread out in nine different markets. Depending on markets, interest rate can go pretty high, up to 10% or even more sometimes. Compound became famous for introducing a DeFi technique called liquidity mining, where they give some extra reward to users of the protocol. This is what made DeFi really take off in 2020. So what is the next step? 
I'm sure by now you start to feel excited by all this crazy DeFi world. DeFi is really cool, but it's also very messy with shiny objects everywhere. You need to be organized if you want to get into DeFi. So the next step is to follow my live training, how to get started in DeFi. I will give much more details than in this video with the exact roadmap you need to follow to become a DeFi developer and to build your DeFi project as an entrepreneur. I will give this live training on Monday, 21st of December at 11 p.m. UTC plus 8. To attend this training and receive the link, you need to register below. I'll see you there.